Mike Francesa, what have you done? Okay, you could have different opinions on what he said about Corey Ballantyne and the incident, the Giants' rook, but there's a bigger issue here, and it highlights what's wrong with the sports media today. E-S-N-Y. Sabo Radio, Elite Sports New York, Mike Francesa, oh my god, this dude, he, he's getting older, listen, he's a legend, Elite Sports New York would not exist without Mike and the Mad Dog, they started it all, they really did, late 80s, the idea of an all sports radio station was laughable, as laughable as as the perception of the New York Giants right now. They didn't do it the right way. They had Susan Waldman. Susan Waldman's great, but they had Waldman. They had Lampley. They had non-New York voices doing, uh, you know, trying to accomplish the goal of an all-New York station. They hit the right tandem with Mike, with the Mad Dog, with Russo, and Mike and the Mad Dog really spurred on a generation of what you see today. ESPN in the 80s, with the Big East, with the NFL Draft, the growing of cable, Mike and the Mad Dog on radio, eventually leaking into podcasts. It, that, that's what really brought us here. That was, the, that was the start of the road. Now, this one is all about Francesca's comments over Corey Ballantyne. And what's transpired over the last 48 hours. Francesa. On Monday. Now here's, listen, you could feel any way you want about what Francesa said. I think there's a wide ranging uh, variable of emotion that you can feel. But what's lost in this conversation is nuance. What's lost is a gray area of digging deeper and understanding truly what he said instead of just piling on and delivering hot takes and blistering headlines. And that's the real takeaway here. So Francesa, he is going at it with the Giants right now. It's funny, this situation reminds me of the Jets two years ago when everyone predicted 1-15. They cut Harris, Decker, Got rid of Marshall, got rid of all the vets, and they're like, oh, what the hell are these guys doing? They can't win a game. Colin Coward, same Colin Coward who's on the Jets bandwagon. Zero and 16. How are these guys going to freaking win a game? Idiots. Names don't mean anything. When the production is not there with the names, such as Harris and Decker and Marshall, it means very little, folks. Truth be told, their roster actually improved that offseason. I said it. I don't know who else did. I predicted six wins. They got five. But it kind of reminds me of that. Watch out for the Gi- Giants. are going to be okay this year. Looking at the roster. Six wins, seven wins. Easy schedule. They could win eight, nine, ten games. Call me crazy. It's okay. But, again, nuance. The narrative carries this momentum that the Giants are a laughing stock and that they're terrible. And quite surprisingly, to to me at least, Francesa is hopping on that bandwagon. This is the Francesa of now that conflicts with the Francesa I used to know. The Francesa I used to know, he always had ties. He always had his people. The Giants are his people. He has a relationship with them. Long-lasting one. But the, the Francesa I used to know would break it down through his eyes. That, okay, the Daniel Jones pick is surprising. Okay, Gettleman is lying to everybody. Yes, he is. But on paper, with the schedule, with the talent, they're not a laughingstock. The perception doesn't match up to reality. And that's where Frances is getting lost here. But anyway, with the Ballantine stuff, we're going to play the audio and then break it down. And the other thing is, listen, 
You can have an off-field incident with any draft pick, any time, any team. But when you finish your draft and stress how you went out of your way to take the right kind of guys, the guys you want on the team, the guys who are going to be great character guys, and you stress that as strongly as the Giants did, it looks pretty bad when one of them gets shot on a Saturday night. It does not look good. I mean, it's just more of the same for the Giants who just can't get out of their own way. I mean, no matter what they say. I mean, uh, and you've seen people poking a lot of fun at the Giants. And as someone who's been around the Giants for 40 years, as someone who has grown up with the football Giants, uh, and you've seen how much success they've had since they turned it around on the George Young, you know what? It's sad to see the Giants become the laughing stock that they have around the league. And right now, people are doing nothing but making jokes about the Giants. And that's sad. So he brings up the character declaration and ties it to the Ballantyne incident. If you don't know, Ballantyne, Washburn product, D2, with his teammate, involved in a shooting incident. They were at an off-campus party. And apparently, according to the family, uh, to his teammate's family, Dwayne Simmons, the car pulled up, asked questions, the car circled back, opened fire. Simmons tragically died. Ballantyne, Giants late round pick, hospitalized, will be okay. Apparently he was shot in the glute, muscle. I have no idea about biology. I don't want to know. Uh, that stuff, I mean, if I have a weakness, the insides of a human body, I mean, what? Who did? Who wants to know what's inside a human body? Come on. Anyway. So, tragic accident. There's very little information out there right now. The latest we heard from the police is that they're trying, they're gathering evidence. They're asking the dozens of people at the party, more than dozens, to step forward. They're, they're urging on witnesses to step forward. We, we don't know what happened, folks. We don't know. To claim we did would be disingenuous. Okay? Now, it could have been completely innocent. The kids could have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. And now, Francesa, on Tuesday, I'm sure to get away from the controversy, walked the statements back. He said, we found out it was innocent. That the kids were at the party and this, this semi-drive-by occurred. That's what the family says. We don't know. Um, but that's not the point. It's not the point. Connecting character and the declaration of character and an incident is where you can get on Francesa. You can't really connect the two because we don't know what happened. But he's right. The optics are bad. No matter what happened, no matter if the kids did anything wrong at all, the optics are bad, unfortunate, unlucky. It's less about the kids and Francesa and more about the Giants and Francesa. The Giants, Francesa is so steamed at the Giants that he's harping on that message of we're going to take the, the right character guys. So should he be criti- Yeah, you can criticize him. That's fine. But the overwhelming, uh, just over-the-top clickbait headlines are insane. And this is what's wrong with the media today. The New York Post, yesterday. Giant Francesa shames Giants for Corey Ballantyne getting shot. What? Shames Giants. He said it was bad optics. He's right. He deserves criticism for sure. You can't really connect the two without understanding what happened. Questions are there. But I think the the really uh, the better headline is Francesa is overly emotionally steamed at the Giants as a whole. That's the real headline here. Now, 
it, it doesn't stop at the New York Post. Every single person is going crazy on Francesa. Everybody. There's no nuance. There's no picking apart exactly what he said. And this is the world we live in. It's a black and white world without nuance, without gray area. Deadspin. Mike Francesa blames Giants draft pick for getting shot and bringing shame to the team. That's a headline. Hey, that's completely ridiculous. He wasn't doing that. Jim Bombach of Newsday. We need to come to a collective decision as a society, as a society, to no longer care about Mike Francesa. Do you see the irony in that? Here's my column. That we need to come to a collective decision as a society to no longer care about Mike Francesa. The subject of my column! Then the capper, Tuesday morning, Boomer and Geo get all over the sports pope. All over him. Geo. All over Francesa. For the things he said. I forget what he said exactly. He called him out of line or disrespectful. Uh, excuse my non-specific quote, but he was all over him. <laughs> this is where Francesa of today is different from Francesa of yesteryear. He calls into the show. Okay? That's a mistake. You don't do it. Here's the audio of him calling into the show. It's me. I'm, I'm, it's me because I'm calling you guys right now. And I don't listen very often, but I just heard what you just said. How much misinformation can you guys give out in five minutes? What's the misinformation I mean, that we gave one, out? What, what is it? I don't know Dave Gettleman. Let me just speak for a minute, Boomer, then you can speak. Number one, I don't know Dave Gettleman. I've, ne I've never spent five minutes with him. Okay, so I have no relationship with him. I've had a very good relationship with the Giants, and the Giants are angry with me. Because I gave out the Boomer information, I mean the uh, Eli information, about him canceling the program and why he canceled the program, which was given to me last Monday. And I was not told that I couldn't give it out for public. Uh, yeah, I wasn't allowed to use it. I was never told that. And I was given that information by FN management as to why he wasn't doing it and that he wasn't doing it. Number two, so I don't have any relationship with Gettleman. Gettleman's never fed me a story. So I wasn't angry at Gettleman for that. I was angry because I thought he had no plan. And I didn't agree with having two quarterbacks on a roster. I think they should have cut one. If they were going to bring in a guy that they believed in as a franchise quarterback, they should have gotten rid of Eli. That was my point last year. That was my point this year. And I'm supposed to be the Eli supporter. I think Eli has gotten too much blame. But the bottom line is if they wanted to move on, they should have got him off the team and then moved on with a young quarterback. Now, about the young player who was shot, you didn't say that I opened up my comment with, this could happen to any player on any team in any organization, any organization in any sport or anywhere in life. And if it turns out that he was in the wrong place or was doing something wrong, it, Giants will look embarrassed because they made such an issue of character. I said, if. I said, we have no facts. I've been trying to get facts. We don't have any facts. <laughs> That's how I opened it up. How about you guys mentioning that before killing me for what I said? How, how, how are the Giants the laughing stock of the league right now? Because of the fact that this whole idea that they came out with a gentleman for two months told people, and he did leak to people, which I know, that he was taking two defensive players and then changed his mind, which he had every right to do. But the other point is they have been back and forth between rebuilding, not rebuilding, rebuilding, not rebuilding. It's gotten stupid. And it got to the point of ridiculousness with bringing this quarterback in. They shouldn't have Eli on the team now. They should start this kid from day one and move on because they're a bad team. And they don't use their assets correctly. Number two, he created this whole ridiculous scenario that everyone was making fun of him. Go look at the Rex Ryan tape on TV of saying he knew that there were two teams that were going to take Jones when they can't find anybody who was going to take Jones. Why bother? Just say, this is my pick and move on. He spent two days trying to justify it, and everyone's been making fun of him everywhere in the country. That's what I'm talking about.
But I guess with the Valentine stuff, though, Mike, why would you even bring up that other side of it? Like the Giants are going to – it just doesn't – What I said was the Giants went out to stress that we were bringing in the right guys. We didn't have the right guys before. I said – this can be very iffy if it proves that this kid was something doing something wrong or was in the wrong place. It's going to make the Giants look very bad. I said, if we have no information. Okay, I mean, I just I it okay, up. all right, and 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 that part I did not hear. I will I will admit oh, it's that. Amazing. It hurt part of it, but didn't hit a whole thing. Well, I, I mean, I think we've all been accused of that at some point. But I just, I guess, my contention would be that the if part is just unnecessary to even bring no, that up when we don't have the information. That's fine, you do your show, I'll do mine. Okay. Are, okay, fine. All right. I mean, I I, I but don't. You're gonna quote me. Quote me correctly. All, all right. All right. But, but the part talking about me, but and not talking about me, sometimes time imitating me. At least get it right. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, okay. But the stuff that that we said that you said, you did say though, right? Yeah, except you took it completely out of context. I don't, I, don't, I, don't how, I don't know. I don't listen. Why did you say the whole thing? If you heard it, you Jesus. heard it properly. Okay. If you didn't hear it, then you're making it up. No, but we didn't make it up. We quoted what you said. No, the way you said it, you made me look like I completely slaughtered them and said there wasn't a chance that they didn't do anything wrong, which I said exactly at the open. Yeah, you said the Giants were the laughing stock of the league, and they're sad. That's what they you are. said. They have been for years, and, you, and, and I, I follow them I, daily, day in, day out, and I said this to the owner. I have said it to him three years ago. Hmm. They haven't made a right decision in five years. Look at them. Look at their record. You don't have they to tell us. We sit here every morning with, talking about with it. With that quarterback, they should have been out of this trouble three years ago. So the Giants, just to, just to be clear, so the Giants are upset with you because you went public with the, the Eli they stuff? they gave information to us telling us that Eli was canceling his show and because he did not want to be the, on the show as a backup was what he was afraid of. And I've gotten that from also some other source. So I, that was backed up by the Giants, who, who I was told that by Mark Chernoff last Monday, both things. And I went up with it before the draft, which infuriated the Giants. Now, do you think, though, that Eli, this had maybe nothing to do with the draft pick because it was decided do weeks I think ago? Eli picked this draft pick? Absolutely not. I think that's the most ridiculous. No, 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 thing no, no, no. Do you, no. What I'm saying is, no, no, no. Do you do you think that the decision not to go on your show was made had nothing to do with the draft pick? And so he it has ju- everything to do with the idea that Eli did not know if he was going to be confident enough that he could finish the season, and he thought it would be embarrassing to have to answer questions about the backup quarterback every week while being the backup quarterback after his career. He did not want to be put in that position. Right, but the decision was made weeks prior to the draft, though, right? I, don't, I was told last Monday, I don't know when the decision was made. Okay. I was told last Monday afternoon. Okay. All right. I mean, by Mark Chernoff in my office. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. All right. See, that's Mike Francesa clearing things up. Not exactly vintage Mike Francesa. He's always been emotional. But as like I said previously, he never let his emotions dictate uh, rational thought. He's not Skip Bayless. He doesn't come with hot takes. He was knowledgeable. He leaned on that knowledge. He leaned on knowing the inner workings. And it's true. But the biggest difference between Francesa today and then is life. He just doesn't watch it as much anymore. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you could clearly, for the people who who listen and know this guy, it's clear. As it pertains to the giant stuff with Boomer and Geo, who the hell knows? Okay, he's clearly mad. He's clearly angry. He wants to be on the same page as the Giants. Gettleman doesn't want anyone on that page. Nobody. So if they do something that he wasn't expecting, or they weren't preaching, plan. He always preaches plans. They have a plan. They don't have a plan. He gets angry. Rex Ryan, he was not on the same page as Rex Ryan. He was angry. It's funny. The Jets could be criticized a lot today. But he doesn't criticize them. He's on the same page. 
This sort of stuff you really didn't get from Francis in the 90s and early 2000s. He, he, let, he allowed rational thought to rule the day. In terms of the Ballantine stuff, he's right. It was out of context. There is nuance to what he said. He didn't condemn the kid. He didn't condemn the kid at all. He called it bad optics. It looks bad. And unless you want to lie to yourself, of course it does. I, I don't care if the kid's a Boy Scout. It's a bad situation. It sucks. Tragic. Could he have hold off, held off on those comments after it was cleared up more? Yeah, for sure. But again, he allowed it. He allowed his emotion to rule the day, with his um, aggravation towards the Giants to rule everything. But yeah, the sports media world is out of control. It's out of control. There's no discussion anymore. It's just like politics. It's just like societal matters. Everything is black and white. Nothing is gray. You can't have a conversation without being offended. You can't have a conversation without one headline popping up and 110 more following it with the same sort of bite with different words. It's crazy. But the worst thing Francesca could have done, he did by calling in. Don't do it. Don't do that. Don't get angry. Let the smart folks read the comments and decipher it for themselves. Let the news run amok. That's fine. The smart folks will understand. They'll realize. Now, it's pretty ironic that Francesca finds himself in this area. He's made a living. And it's, this is kind of a secret. People don't realize this. He's made a living on, as a radio guy, figuring out the formula pretty much before anybody. He's made a living on either making the fan, the listener, hate him or love him, leaving no gray area. So when it comes to the Yankees, everything is love for the Yankees. When it comes to certain other topics, Everything is hate for that topic. He will always take a hard stance. It's not hot takes. It's taking a hard stance and using rational thought to break down that hard stance. He does this intentionally. He has a... It's a character. It's a personality. He takes these hard stance, stances and makes the fan either love him or hate him. That's why he has so many adoring fans. And that's why he has so many people who hate this SOB and would love nothing more than to see him gone, cast away, just obliterated from sports media. And it's pretty ironic that he, the, the same thing he made a career out of, leaving no room for gray area, no room for nuance, he's getting blasted for and he's getting condemned for. When he tries to discuss nuance, hey, listen, it's still a hard stance on a very touchy subject, but it's ironic. He's taking a huge hit right now when nobody could see the nuance. No one could see the gray area and break it down even further. He's on right now. It's five o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday. He has an hour and change left. Like I said, he walked it back at the top of the show. Try to keep the heat off a little bit. Callers are calling in, doing their thing. Why did you call into Boomer and Geo? Why didn't you address it at the top of your show after calling in? You know, he gave the same uh, Francesa. Type responses. Uh, let me run my show. You run, You worry about your show. Let me run my show. But we'll see. 
the information that comes out about the Ballantyne incident should not affect his statements. You can criticize him. You can be upset about his statements, but to a certain degree. Meaning, to connect the giant's declaration of character with an incident that we have no idea whether character was involved is a criticizable offense. Absolutely. It's not a death sentence. It's not to the same degree that we're seeing Francesa be condemned all over the place. That's the sports media takeaway. What's, what's wrong with news today? Sports, politics, everything. It's over the top. It's crazy. It's clickbait mania. But on the other hand, he's right. It is bad optics. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if uh, Ballantyne and Simmons were doing nothing wrong. It's just an unfortunate bad luck, bad optics situation. And, if, and I think if he didn't feel so many horrible emotions about the Giants right now, he wouldn't have taken it that far. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm sure he's going to try to avoid it for the rest of all time. No matter what comes out, no matter what the situation was, he'll try to avoid it and look to avoid it. In terms of the Giants stuff, though, uh, you know, it, it does remind me of the 0-16 and 16 Jets predictions that summer. The Jets did the right thing by cutting bait with all those old, tired veterans who just weren't good anymore. They, they, you know, names. This isn't the NBA. This isn't a superstar league. It's a value league. Um, Brian Costello of the New York Post had a report a league source called the Jets the laughing stock of the league. I remember it two summers ago, as plain as day. I'll put the link in the uh, YouTube description. I said, calm down. Look at the roster. It's actually improved. Don't get hung up on the names. Look at the quality. Look at the roster. They started off fast. If they hadn't mailed it in the rest of the way, they probably could have won seven, six, seven, maybe even eight games. They won five. So be careful. Don't think the Giants are a laughing stock. It plays into that same news media, over-the-top media, where people run with it and click it. Actually, they don't even click it. They just read the headline. They don't think for themselves. They allow others to do their thinking for them. And that's what you have to avoid. Francesa, who is being condemned for nuanced comments that make sense, although could be very well too soon and not right. Do your own thinking. Don't let people tell you what's right and what's wrong. And if we had more fans that who did that instead of just looked at headlines that ran wild... In this social media garbage Twitter world. Twitter. Twitter's the worst place. You can't have a real conversation on Twitter. It's garbage. If fans did that, we'd, in, we'd be in a much better sports place filled with much more knowledgeable fans.